looks like we got a lure from. Oh, hi everyone, and welcome to this, the last time that Argo 37 will be live. Before we go round, let's, um, here's my social links. Uh, go and check out our Discord, YouTube, and Twitter. Um, also check out our Patreon, there's some free stuff and other cool stuff over on there. It's actually one of the best ways to support us. Um, also go and check out our merch. I'm not sure if there's any codes going on today, but I'm sure if you do a quick Google search you'll find some. You can catch all of our merch and everything on Redbubble. Um, also, uh, at the moment, Eden are doing a $5 discount. If you go and buy um, the Cypher system today with, uh, with the code EDEN, you'll get a $5 discount. Oh, Monty, Monty Cook Games. 
There's a link in chat. It's, you guys will yeah. understand. I'm tired as hell. It's finale week, everyone. I'm emotionally drained. We're going to get through this. Um, also, I have uh, sponsors Bird in the Storm Processing. Go and check out all of their wonderful stuff. And Mage Hand Press, the creators of this lovely module, this lovely expansion for 5e. Um, if you like what we're throwing down today, go and check out their stuff. Um, lastly, there is a tweet. Every 10 retweets will get... What? No. Eden. Oh... I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's so... Updated now. Refresh. It'll be fine. Thank you, Spud. Thank you, Tater. Uh, okay, so, yeah, there's a tweet as well. Go and retweet. Every time retweets will get us a wild magic surge. Uh, Alice, can I please hand over to you? Yes, you can. Um, I guess we'll go round, and we'll just introduce ourselves and our characters, and then we will jump into it. Uh, today we are joined by the lovely Dice on Ice RPG. Megan, how are you? I'm very excited. <laughs> Looking forward to playing. Awesome. And who are you playing today? Uh, today I will be playing uh, the Amoeboid uh, Leviathan Cross, or Lev for short. Awesome. So, yes. Um, and we're gonna hop over to V. How are you, V? I'm <laughs> last good. episode. I know. No, I kind of want to admit it, but yeah, this last episode. So, hi everyone. I'm V. I have the YouTube channel, The Crafting Muse, where I show you how to make terrain, paint minis, uh, game accessories, and fun things like that. You can find me over there, and on Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook. And I play Lieutenant Commander Alara Gibbis. She is a half orc barbarian of the Dreadnought Path. Um, she has. She's been a fun character to play because she's grown and she's changed a lot from the beginning. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how we're going to wrap things up for this episode. Awesome. And last but not least, Scrat. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Are we playing Blister, who has not killed Telemachus, um, but may be about to be getting framed? Um, he's the most, most useless character I've ever designed with um, free... Uh, free Three levels gained and three classes taken. Um, <laughs> I'm ready, Alice. Melt my mind. I don't think there'll be too much my melting. This is wrapping up, so I think you'll be good. But mind you, I said that last week, so. Anyway. So. Alara. Telemachus is in the kitchen type cafeteria thing. She is. Yeah, Blister's been gone for what seems like a couple of days. You're not too sure where he is, and Telemachus is trying to distract herself by making a huge batch of these protein bars that she dishes out every time she stood on a stool, this huge mixing bowl, and you'd think with all this technology there'd be something that does it for her, but she's seems pretty intent on doing it herself as she mixes all these ingredients in a bowl. What are you doing? Uh, I'm seeing her do this, so I'm probably going to walk over to her and sort of put my hands on her shoulders. Are you doing okay here, kiddo? Yep. Just making protein bars. You going to feed an army with those? Uh, might need a bit more than that if I'm going to do that. I was kidding. You know that, right? Yeah. Really, though, are you okay? You know we can talk about things. Yeah, I'm fine. He'll turn up eventually. It's Blister. He always turns up. Yeah. I'm not gonna say you're wrong on that one because that tends to be true, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't know how he does it. He just keeps popping up out of nowhere. Maybe someday we'll figure that one out. But for now, if you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay. And there's a bing and the oven goes off and a tray pops out of fresh protein bars. And she starts quickly collecting them up. Says, "Um, <clears throat> one of the cryo tubes are being opening today, so you know, I thought I'd make a fresh batch." Well, lucky them, they get a fresh batch. Uh huh. Warm. And she Even starts better. heading off towards the cryo chambers. Now, oh. sorry, go on, Alara. I, I'm probably following after her. I'm guessing. You can do if you want. You can sort of slowly wander um, down. She's probably got a little bit of a uh, skip in her step. And Lev. You hear a as the lid of your cryo chamber lifts off. You feel a bit cold.
cold, a bit chilly, a bit woozy, like you feel, you're definitely hungry, you feel a bit weak. And there is a small girl smiling down, down at you, this big bushy curly blonde hair, and she's holding a tray of these weird looking bars and a half orc behind you, who you'll probably um, recognize as your lieutenant. Hello! And she sort of holds the plate out, it's like, protein bar. Lev would immediately reach up and touch the, the girl, and you would see <clears throat> uh, Lev was kind of this humanoid blob, but as soon as uh, as soon as they touch this girl, you can see their figure begin to form and resemble uh, the characteristics of the girl. Wow. Oh. I didn't know they could do that. Like, she just looks back to Alara. <laughs> I, I didn't either. Minor request, can you make your hair a different color just so we don't... Um... We've had a few of her floating around, so a different hair color would be very much appreciated. I think Megan has frozen briefly. Oh no. <laughs> but Telemachus is like, um, Alara, do you want one? And holds up the tray. She sort of herself starts taking one and eating one anyway, before yeah. heading over and pressing some of the buttons. Uh, definitely. Thank you. I have a feeling we've been living off these things for the past couple of days. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the only thing she's been cooking. Uh-oh. We'll be back in in a minute. Yes. Yeah. So, Blister, you are stood in this room with older Telemachus across the room, but her back to you as she's working on something. That gun in your hand and another Telemachus stood to the side of you, squeezing your arm. I am so sorry. My internet just, like, exploded. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I am so sorry. I, I, uh, l the last I heard was, um, uh, Lev had turned into the girl and then I didn't hear your response. <laughs> Well, we've currently hopped over to Blister briefly, but we will be okay. back in a moment. Blister, what are you doing? Freaking the hell out! Uh, all right, hang on, a minute, hang on. A minute. Can you picture the scene in a lot more words for me? You're stood in the lab, that mm -hmm. lab, the day you shot Telemachus. Mm -hmm. That Telemachus is currently stood with her back to you. Mm -hmm. You have a gun in your hand, you have a suit on. Yep. And another Telemachus looks slightly older, is mm -hmm. holding, squeezing your arm, going, It's okay. It's gonna happen. No, it's fucking not. Blister, it needs to. What do you mean it needs to? You disrupted the timeline. That isn't me. Uh, I don't think you'll find I did disrupt the timeline. I don't disrupt things. I break them completely. Never okay. able to be fixed again. Then you broke the timeline. This... This one shouldn't be here. What do you mean they shouldn't be here? There's no reason her, to kill her. Her, her and me are one in the same. Good. Which is from different... I don't even know. This... That one... Is the baby you stole. I'm the one you picked it up off of the SS Greenway. You've disrupted time. There cannot be two. What will happen if there's two? Then we both die. Why? Because we slowly fade out of existence. That two cannot live in the same. Well, where have you where have you seen that? Wear, When's it happened? A reason I wear a suit. I can't have her see me. And she is infected. 
What do you mean she's infected? She is infected. Alara told you. She saw it. She saw it. She saw. She, she saw the thing. My my grandfather grab her, infect her. She's gonna turn, and then it won't be me anymore. If you're telling me is true, you're telling me that the one that we raise between us, me and Alara, is the one that I'm going to be shooting, which you say is infected, but they've made it to this old without showing any signs. No. And the one that we pick up off the SS Greenway, which is you, and I, we do trust you at minute. It's telling me to shoot the other one. Forgive me if I'm not being overly trusting right here, right now. I get it. I get it. Until I met the other me. I get it. What do you mean they'll fade out? Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, I have. When? Who? I saw an older version of me meet me and fade out of existence. They passed me because we are two different people but the same at the same time and and as you're talking the Tamakus with her back for you goes ow and you can just see black see it from her th fingertips and she goes no 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 it's fine it's fine and keeps working away ah oh, hell if she comes into contact with any of you now on this timeline, right now. Have you still got one of them time travel devices? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. I need to see it. Of course. I need to see it all go wrong. Then bring me back here and we'll make a decision. Where do you want to go? I need to see it. See the transformation or see the result of you not doing this? Both. Come with me. And she holds out her hand. Holster the goddamn gun and take her hand. She slams the button on her wrist and you get that sort of nauseated feeling as you land on ground, you're no longer on a ship. You look around you and the sky is black, it is smoking, it is foggy. The oh. ground beneath you, everything is dead, it is dusty, it's black. Excuse me, Telemachus, but this isn't Argo. It's not Argo, there is no Argo anymore. Alright. Alright. Little Miss, I'm the ghost of future past. Where are we then? Earth. And you can see buildings around you that have almost been completely flattened. Again, black, there is an ichor that spreads round on the floor. You can see it moving. You see it creeping up the remaining um, buildings and the rubble. Huge, huge creatures with long black dripping limbs trudge across your path, not looking. Long dripping jaws, and they just howl. This. This is what happens. Sorry, I just ended up banning someone in chat for aggressive behavior. Can you repeat that for me? There are huge, huge, gangling, ichor, black ichor dripping creatures. They're about nine, ten foot tall. As they walk, their long arms drag across the ground. 
and they have a long jaw and they howl as I they walk past. No, Telemachus, you've taken me too far. I don't give a sh no, I don't care about all of this. See what happened as a result? No, 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 no. I said I need to see it. I need to see it all go to hell on Argo. I need to see what matters to me. You know, there's only two things that matter to me. Okay. They won't be able to see you. Good. Not in this. And you disappear once more. You're on Argo. There is an alarm sounding. There is. The, the ship seems to be rocking from side to side. The lights are off. And you stand in a corridor. You see older Telemachus clutching her chest as she tries, staggers down this hallway. With each step, her hands thrust up against the wall, and as she touches it, black ichor spreads from her fingers and then up her arms. She looks like she's struggling to breathe. She ends up crawling. She starts off shouting your name, and Alara's. But then it just turns into this screaming howl that erupts down the corridor. And this black ichor starts to spread. You see Alara at the end of the corridor. Flash again. She can't help it. She runs to Telemachus's aid. You see this ichor consume her. Runs up her arms as she holds Telemachus over her body and down her throat and you see her drop. You see Argo start to spark and wire. Blister, you lie dead on the floor around the corner with a gunshot wound to your head. That's what happened to me before, right? What do you mean, sorry? When 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 we saw Telemachus get shot, mm -hmm. I got shot in the head. No. No? Okay. How did that happen? But... <sighs> she did it. What? No. She was just calling my name. Why would she do that? No. Not Telemachus. Alara did it. You tried to stop her. You tried to stop. As she... You tried to leave. She wouldn't leave her. You had the younger one with you. You had the younger me with you. What? The wee bairn? Me, seven. Seven years old. Hang on, hang on. When you say the younger you, do you mean the one that we found on the Greenway or the one that we found The one installed? you found on the Greenway. Me. You got me out, Blister. And you disappeared. But the cost... The gunshot to the head. I then... I wandered on my own. I drifted through space. Till I crash-landed on the world that I showed you. I didn't realise it was on the ship. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it had been fed into Project E. Oh, hell. Maybe, maybe I don't, maybe I don't need to, maybe I don't need to shoot you. Maybe we could go back to Project E and we could stop Project E from getting infected with all of that mucus. It's in the genetics. I mean, it's in the genetics. It's in the genetics. My grandfather was born with it. I already. Right. Project E, Alara's gone. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If it's if your grandfather was born with it, surely that means that both you and Alara have both got it. Because if he if she comes from him, and you come from her, 
It is dormant in me. And her. But something woke it up in me. Not me, me. <laughs> and she sort of gestures to this thing that crawls past you down the hall, which is almost unrecognizable now. I'm sorry. All right, look. Show me what happens if I do do it. If you kill? I. What do you want to see? What time frame? I mean... I, I, can't, I can't tell you that. I know what I want to see. I want to see us all happy. Just going around space, you know, just like... Maybe this will help. And she reaches into her pocket and pulls out what looks like a folded up photo and holds it out to you. I take the photo. You open it and you can see a picture of you, Alara and Telemachus. Telemachus is older. Telemachus looks to be 22 years old. She's in a suit. She's just graduated. We found Earth. Or we will. But I'm fading already. And she holds up her hand and you can see she's fairly transparent. Well, hang on a minute. If we... If from this point you grow to 22 years old or whatever, then what the hell are you doing on this timeline anyway? Because you don't want to kill her. You picked up the baby. You broke the timeline. This is not something that should have happened. You chose to go back to a time. You picked up a baby and you picked up... Alara. You have two Alaras. You have the same person on the same ship. I don't I don't understand why that's such an issue. Some people look into themselves and they freak. They their mind crashes, it burns, they can't do anything about it. When younger Alara grows up and has to face your Alara. Game over. One of them goes. One of them goes out of whack. And I don't really want to see her go through that. Look, I know how to use magic, alright? I know I might not be very good at it. But I know how to make a minor illusion and stuff like that to make it look like a, a faded or something. How do I know you're not lying? How do I know that you're not really the curse or Greenway or something? There's no curse of Greenway. I am a Greenway. I'm not that Greenway. You raise me better than that Greenway. Blister looks troubled and confused. Because what she's saying makes sense, but all of his senses are telling him to shoot this one. You can roll an insight check if you want. It's up to you. Yeah, that might help. <laughs> Hell, I'm going to use that advantage from Sheena. Mm -hmm. I didn't even fade it in, but I'm going to take it off now. <laughs> Ten. On a ten, 
this Telemachus seems genuine. And she looks scared. It's like she's talking to you more like a professional. But you can guess this might be because she's trying to stay out of it emotionally. Look, I'm not ready to pull the trigger yet, but I trust you. I'm glad. Take me back, but give me a bit of time. Don't take me right to the moment where I've got a shooter, for Christ's sake. Okay. You've got to build up to that sort of thing, you know. You can't just be like, oh, hey, here you go. Look, you need to shoot this one, otherwise all your friends and family die. You, you don't want the build-up, Lister. You don't want that build-up, that anticipation, that wait. Do we have an exit strategy? Because if I turn up in that timeline... You won't turn up in that timeline. You're frozen here. And she sort of taps her bracelet. I promise I will return you to Alara. Your Alara, your Telemachus. Me. <laughs> Straight after. But I can't do this. Out of int the answer is going to be really confusing. All right, all right, all right. Well, maybe let's just take a moment here. Yeah, let's just take a moment here. I mean, you know, we can watch Alara get consumed by Black Black Acre. That'll that'll probably work up my appetite for shooting you. Is it biting sarcasm to what he's saying? <laughs> he's like, yeah. After everything, to think I became that. So, you want to be a mage or a fighter? If it helps. I can show you how to be a shield. <laughs> I did pretty well. The school. I graduated early. You of course you did. I don't know why I wouldn't have sent you to school then away. You're too smart. They try and crush you with all their bloody. whatever they call them, you know. Curriculums. Alara made me go. At least for three years. Wait, I see it. Don't think there was anything you couldn't have taught yourself. Well, I became a lot. And I don't want that ruined. I... I save lives now. <laughs> And I'd like to continue doing that. And if right. it means killing one me to save many, then... Alright, but just... Remember the lesson of your grandfather. Don't obsess with it. I am one, never travelling on my own like him. And two, I am not going to chase diseases. Alright, alright. Those sound like fail safes. They don't sound like you learnt the actual lesson. You can't play God. I know. You can do what you can do in the time. Don't don't use this, he taps her arm. To try and save the ones you can't save. You can't avoid that mourning process. It's really difficult. Yeah. Aye, it is. I'm building up to it myself right now. It's not going to be easy, shooting you in the back of the head. And then going back to Alara and, 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 and Argo and you and everyone and pretending like everything's fine. But I assume I can't tell them. What the hell? How would I tell Alara? She'd kill me. She'd rip my head off. You can tell them. I just please don't tell me. I would much rather this than seven-year-old me watch what I do to Alara, what I do to you, and then spend the rest of my life wondering. What do you do? 
swap for a job? No, I mean, what what do you do to them? You just said you don't want to see what you do to them. What do you do to them? This, and she looks around. Oh, right, I thought you meant you don't want to see the seven-year-old doing what the seven-year-old does, and I thought, what, were you a particularly terrible teen or something? Like, you know, giving us a no. hard time. No, I became... That seven-year-old will become a scavenger. Nothing else. Gotta stay alive. Why doesn't she stick with us? Because you're dead. Look, and she gestures to you on the floor. Oh, now you see, it's very confusing having all these telemachi and all these different timelines. Yeah. It is. So what happens to you? Do you do anything to us? Are we alive where you're from? And she just taps the photo that you're holding. Alright, we're going to make a deal right now. Don't you tell me nothing about me and Alara. Not a damn word. I don't want to know if we're friends. I don't want to know anything. Alright? Okay. Hell of it. Come on, take me back. It's time to shoot you. Oh. <laughs> and she slams on the button on her wrist. And you are back in that same position again. I'm going to stop casting technical difficulties on the gun mm -hmm. and in one motion I'm going to draw the pistol, hold it to the back of Telemachus's head, I'm going to pull the trigger and without looking, tears in my eyes, I'm going to turn around and say get me the hell out of here She you can sit, you hear the body fall you hear some voices down the corridor screaming and running. You can hear younger Telemachus. Get me out of here, Telemachus. And she looks at you. She also has tears in her eyes. She's like, yeah. And slams the button again. And you appear in a kitchen. And you can smell protein bars being cooked. We're going to hop back over to Alara and Lev. What are you guys doing in this cryo chamber? Is, uh, well, as Telemachus is currently scanning Lev just to make sure that there's nothing wrong or anything like that. I think Lev would look at Alara. Hello. It is nice Hello. to see you again. It's good to see you too. I forgot that you could take on different appearances. Yes. Is this not preferable for you? I can if, change again. If you wouldn't mind shifting it a little bit, it would help us uh, sit a little easier, considering things that have been happening lately. All right. And uh, you would see Lev kind of shift back into their normal form which is just kind of this semi-translucent, bluish, uh, ichor, humanoid. Um, I apologize if I have been asleep for too long. How long has it been? Offhand, I'm not exactly sure, but you haven't done anything wrong by remaining in stasis. It's completely fine. It's just every so often we have to check and make sure that, uh, those who are are doing okay, so I'll wake you up here and there, and uh, to be perfectly frank, we're not exactly on the same path as we were when we first set off. I detect worry in your face. Is that the right word for it? Worry? She's going to smile ironically because she can relate very much to Lev. And uh, she's going to acknowledge there is worry, yes. Very observant of you. You're picking up quickly on our uh, appearances and actions, aren't you? I have a whole list and I've been working very hard and um, why do you worry? I worry about decisions we've made and things that have happened and if we're actually doing what we should be doing but unfortunately there are more questions that come up as we get answers. I like questions. 
questions always have an answer. Oh, I hope so. What are some of yours? Hmm. I see. You are trying to banter. Um... Let me process this for a moment, and I will come up with some questions and answers for you. I look forward to it. Would you like some assistance getting out of the tube? Yes, please. I'll Most... put my hand out. <laughs> As you step out of the tube, you see these tiny little wismos, these little robots of different sizes, and they see you in this almost sort of flowing form, and some of them are running and jumping and trying to bounce off of you, and they're sort of poking you here and there just to see what you're like. And the little girl, the seven-year-old, is like, don't mind them, they're fine, get off, off. And like, as she sort of tries to usher them away. Lev just kind of looks down at these things uh, that are that are jumping and... They are pesky, is that chaotic. the word? That's a... That's actually quite accurate. Pesky, chaotic, cute. But honestly, as long as they aren't being given things they shouldn't have, they're relatively harmless. I think at this point, Lev would kind of pick one up and just kind of look at it. If they're like... Yeah, yeah, they're all sort of slightly different sizes, but the biggest is about that big. As you pick it up, it's sort of trying to swipe at you a little bit with these long arms. It's got these long mechanical arms, but it can't reach you. Yeah, Lev is just kind of like holding it <laughs> just at arm's length. As this happens, screen comes down. Argo. Um, thought you might want to know. Looks like Blister's turned up. He's in the cafeteria. Are you sure? He's quickly leaving the cafeteria. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, he's on the move. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So he sort of pops, like, flashes the screen over and you can see Blister just stepping out of the cafeteria. I'm going to turn to Telemachus. Why don't you catch Lev up on everything and I'm going to make sure that's our Blister. Okay. And Telemachus holds out a hand to um, Lev. She's like, do you want to see the bridge? <laughs> Lev just kind of reaches out and envelops Telemachus' yeah, hand. Like, oh. He's like, oh. okay. <laughs> and, like, and sort of tries to drag, I guess, like stretch you a little bit. And she mm. takes you up to the bridge to show you a huge window of all these void fish. These are giant space jellyfish that are about three or four times larger than the ship. And you can see constellations and galaxies swirl within them. Alara, what are you doing? I'm probably running at this point towards the direction I think Blister's going. Blister's heading back to his room. Okay, then off to his room. <laughs> you already in your room or to your room? Uh, I guess, I'd, I'd hope by the time that you catch up to him that he's already got into his room. Uh, he has opened a cabinet. Uh, inside that cabinet is one of the larger Wismos. Uh, <laughs> he's going to take a Wismo tree off the top, which is essentially like a, you know, a, a, the most chaotic candy you can find. It's like a mega sour. I'm going to give it to the, to the Wismo. Open the cabinet on its front. Pull out the large bottle of moonshine that I'd made some time ago and secreted here. Close the cabinet, close the cupboard, and begin down in the moonshine. Yeah, you see this Wismo take this and start going, like, shaking on the spot as you have uh, given it, like, this. Effectively a sour sweet, a toxic waste. Um, but then it sort of relaxes again and comes and sits on your knee. I'm just going to stroke it whilst chugging away. It purrs. <laughs> I'll knock on the door. I... Is it okay to come in? Always. I'll open the door. Hey, Alara! 
How are you? I think the better question is, how are you? She's fine. I'm thinking about doing some cooking in a bit. It's interesting to see the bottle back out. What? This? No, it's that's new at all. What happened? Can't tell you. Can't or won't? Both. Half tempted to let you keep drinking that because I have a feeling you'll start spilling if you do. Might as well shoot me now. Why would I shoot you? Can't tell you. <laughs> Mister starts to laugh, but as he laughs, tears well up. I'm gonna sit down next to him. Where did you go? Same place we've been going this whole journey. Back to the future. At which point? I think you can probably guess. It had to happen then, didn't it? It just starts drinking again. She'll take the bottle and tuck it away. <laughs> Before you even had to do it, you were shaken by it. There's more to it, isn't there? You know how we, how, well, not we. You know how you are always fixing the things that, because I'm always breaking things. That's sort of a generalization. I don't know if you're always breaking things. It's like my best skill. I use, um, technical difficulties to just break something around the room. Just point at it. Look! <laughs> you blow up a small clock and the wizmo jumps. Best thing I'm good at. No. Well, I helped you break our lives. Break time. What do you mean, break our lives? As far as I know, from what I've experienced on my end, yes, you and your Wismos get up to some interesting antics at times. But your presence and your being here with us has helped me and has helped Telemachus. You've done more than you've realized. That's certainly true. It's all coming back to bite us in the arse, Laura. These adventures. These journeys through the void fish, that trip back to Earth, the multiple different timelines that we've gone into and just changed things without thought. It was my idea, wasn't it? Let's go back to Greenway. My idea to rig the ship up in a way with the whole time device. You weren't the only one with ideas. And at any of those points, I could have said no. You and the other Alara on the bridge. Project E. What is it it says in the movie? There can only be one. Why do you think I keep her plugged up and put away? I'm not sure, but I think we've got to get rid of her. It doesn't feel right. None of it feels right. And quite frankly, when we got the baby Telemachus, something clicked or reminded me of the conversation we had with the one who was after diseases. She didn't know certain parts of things that we'd been through already. Which at the time didn't make sense. But now having two of them here, what if, what if we ended up getting two and then there's two of them floating around and one goes in one direction, the other in a completely different one. It, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right. One of yous is going to feed. Mm. 
Myself or Telemachus? Both. We have two duplicates on the same timeline, one of your feeds. We've dragged that one, them ones over from that timeline onto this timeline. I don't know whether because you are supposed to be on this timeline you'll fade or whether they'll come in like some sort of interloper and, and push you out like a weed. Do you think we could fix it? We've been trying to fix things from the start. Do you know actually that's when it all started going wrong I reckon when I was just sitting here drinking it was all going quite well. I don't mean today, I mean like months and months back. Not that I'm saying I regret meeting you or anything, that's not true. Go back to square one then? Maybe, I don't know. I wish that other Telemachus was here again, I'd love to talk to her. Did the other Telemachus appear when I appeared in the kitchen? No. Look. I don't think you're gonna shoot me, but you probably should. The other Telemachus appeared and took me there. Got me to shoot the one that got shot. But not before I saw it consume you. Everything. Shot me in the head. And then turned into that greenway monster that we found way back when. And started consuming you. Whilst you held it like a wee bear and then cried about it. I could see you didn't have the strength to do it. She's like a daughter to you, I understand. So I had to do it for you. If I'm following what you're telling me. Sounds like you didn't have any other choice. When does that ever matter? You've always got a choice. Would you want to go back and try and make it so none of it ever happened? I was sort of getting halfway there with the moonshine. I reckon with a couple more bottles, I wouldn't be able to remember a thing. Well, maybe for you, but unfortunately for the rest of us in this universe, I don't think it work quite like that. Yeah, he looks a little stung. That that stung. Sorry. I'll I don't give know. You some time. I don't know. I don't blame you. I don't even know where we stand right now, quite frankly, in terms of time, place, or the best choice. But for all your bravado, you do love that little girl. Our little girl, that seven-year-old whiz kid. I don't know about the infant. We haven't gotten to that point yet. But if you did what you had to do, you probably had very good reasons for it. When you're ready, you can find me. And I'll leave the note that he left behind in his lap and leave the room. As you do this, <clears throat> as you go to leave the room, I need you to both make a dexterity save as something collides with Argo. Can I choose to fail? Yeah, you can. Yeah, Blister, uh, how do you fall? Lara, you managed to keep hold of the doorway. I'm already sitting down, so I imagine I just go flying across the room. 
Yeah, you probably crash into the wall the other side. And over on the uh, on the bridge, Lev. Telemachus is showing you all these void fish. She seems really intrigued that she's the, there's this. The, she's sort of trying to get you to let go of her hand at the same time. Um, she's pointing at these big void fish. Like, look, um, and there's that one over there. And what? What is that? Uh, I'll go. And sort of presses a button, and the screen comes down again. And he's just like. Hold on to something. And Lev, I'd also like you to make a dexterity check, please. And I think to Lemkus will as well. Yeah. So this takes you completely off guard as this huge ship comes crashing into the side of you. Telemachus is thrown off her feet and over to the ground and you in sort of your sort of globule sort of way just sort of you know when you pour water out of a glass you sort of start running to the other um, side of the ship and she jumps up like what, what, what was that? I am not sure perhaps we should meet up with Alara assess the situation yeah yeah, and then you hear this awful scrape screech of metal as it just starts running down the side of Argo. This way. And I think that <clears throat> Lev would almost angle themselves uh, between this noise um, and the child almost making themselves look a little bit bigger, uh, uh, kind of shielding them a little bit as they run back. Yeah, as you, as you run down this corridor, um, Telemachus is running just that little bit in front of you to get towards Blister's um, down, room down by the corridor as you sort of whoop, just get that little bit bigger. And Blister, V, uh, V, Lara, <laughs> sorry. Um, what are you guys doing? I have a feeling if I'm just leaving his room, I'm probably seeing them coming towards us, correct? You will see, uh, you'll, well, you'll probably hear Telemachus first, but you'll see her come screeching around the corner with Lev, just that little bit bigger, almost shielding her over the top. I'm going to scoop her up and hold on to her. What's going on? I think we've been hit by, like, I'll go, what is it? And then you just hear a voice go, another ship. Can you get a view of the ship, Argo? Yeah, yeah, give me a moment. Like, and you just sort of see the screen pop up. And as it sort of careers past you, you see the words past the window say SS Greenway. Does it look desolate and abandoned? It looks pretty roughed up. Can you roll a perception for me, please? Da -da -da. Lister's still in his room, right? Uh, when things start going down, he'll get up and start joining you. He's not going to sit and mope while the ship's under attack. Yeah, so Blister, you can't see too much. Probably from the moonshine you're drinking. <laughs> um, you didn't quite get it, but it just looks like you've seen this ship before. You've been on this ship before, but this looks roughed up. There's bits of it have fallen away. It looks in worse shape than when you last left it. And Alara, you can see that this, it's like it's drifted into you. It doesn't look to be controlled by anything. Is that what I think that is? Oh, I'm gonna look at the blister. It's Grandpa's ship. Looks awfully familiar. He's gonna draw the gun, which I imagine is still warm. Yeah, it sits warmly in your palm. Better defend the ship, right? Was there anything yeah. left on that ship? Only one thing. That's what? what I'm afraid of. Now, Alara, you're holding Telemachus. I want you to roll a perception for me, please. 
And also I'd say Lev as well, because you're sort of doing it as like a protection thing. Okay. All these 17s. Um, both, uh, so Lev, you're looking at Telemachus and she looks like she's see-through. You can see some of Alara. And Alara, you can feel like you're losing grip on Telemachus. I don't think humans are supposed to react this way. No, they definitely aren't. What? What? what what's wrong? How are you feeling, sweetie? Fine. Why, why would I feel bad? And as she says this, you see her almost flash for an instant disappear and be back again. Are you what's still that? wearing that time thing? No! And she holds up her wrist as she's not wearing anything. Why? What's wrong? And she disappears. Completely. If you're still there, Telemachus, can you write on the wall? There's no writing on the wall. This is what you're talking about, isn't it? Messing with time, it just messes with everything. Look. I didn't ask any questions about what happens to us. I don't want to know. But I didn't stop the future Telemachus showing me a picture. A picture of her graduating college or something. And me and you standing together around her. But it wasn't the baby Telemachus. We owe it to her to let her have that. Which one? Ours. Our Telemachus. The little girl you saved from the ship, the little girl who made me human. I think that means we need to get rid of the bear. Yes. You can hear. Hello? Hello? Alara, is this coming through? Telemachus? Hi! Yeah, I've got a slight problem. Um. I'm on Grandpa's ship. Tell us where, and we're going to be right there. I don't know. I think... I think I'm on the bridge, but it looks different. I can't... And then it cuts out. We have to get her. We get her back. We get that baby back to where it belongs. And hope to God we've done the right thing. Well, just put it back in that timeline where the thing was... Killing everything. Do you remember how we left that timeline? All too well. Think how so. do we stop ourselves? I think we're only going to complicate things further. I don't want this to end up like the butterfly effect. Do you ever watch that movie? Oh, it was confusing. It was confusing, but do you remember the ending? When the only way that he could stop everything from happening was to stop himself from meeting the person altogether. Yes. Which is why I was saying square one. I don't want that. Maybe we can just try and repair things where we are now. Let's stop traveling through time. Let's just get rid of things that don't belong here. And I know that sounds harsh, but... How do you intend to get rid of a 13-year-old Alara in a tube? And a baby? You know how. How do you know that's not going to get rid of the other two? If those are our previous selves, and I'm not agreeing to it, 
and we do away with them. I don't think Telemachus or I will even be here anymore if that were the case. We'll only eliminate them from our timeline. Your timeline's different. If that were the case, when we took him in the first place, you would have disappeared. Because you wouldn't have been in the place where I found you. Or, well, you were here the whole time, but I mean, we wouldn't have found Telemachus. What if we try and find some place for them here and we jump again? I don't know anymore. My hands are already bloody, Alara. I'm not asking you to do it. I'll take the singularity emitter. It'll just be a black hole. There won't be anything left. We need to get our girl first before we make any further decisions. Alright. Who knows, there might actually be answers on that ship somewhere, somehow. My god, I hope so. Um, and Argo drops down. If you guys are uh, gonna go over there, do you want your stuff? Our stuff? Yeah, yeah, stuff. Uh, well, something you put away in a locker, Alara, when you first came on board. And uh, I just want to let you know, I'm terrified. But blisters or wismos have kind of made you something. This oh. I have to see. It's down in the lab. I don't... Just don't fire it in here. I'm just going to start walking towards the lab. Alice, can you remind me the names of those items so that I can pull them out of the book? Well, first of all, they're both on page 122. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got the BEG 3000. And for Alara, thank you again, Tweeter Vecna, for the Doom Gauntlet. These are both legendary weapons. Oh. You arrive in the lab. Blister, there is just this mass of Wismos covering this huge, huge singularity emitter. And Alara, you see your, uh, one of your old lockers. It is open. And there's like a, almost like um, just a gauntlet that looks like it could fix already onto your suit. Wired up. You, you and the Wiz, the Wismos did this. Oh, I didn't do the gauntlet. Wismos, I don't know. They just sort of thought, I don't know. They put all theirs together. They did some other bits. There's, there's some weird stuff in the basement. Turns out, but yeah, yeah. I'm going... Can I wear both of them with a the battle fist and the other one? I don't think you can. I think okay. it's because it's a legendary item. Yeah, well. that's what I was yeah. trying to find my file is what's also happening here. Um, then I guess I will put on the new gauntlet. So, uh... Do you want me to put the parking brake on? Well, we're going to have to stop if we want to get to that ship. And all of you, you feel this immediate, like, emergency brake, this halt, as it's... as everything stops, and you all wave a little bit, and you probably see Lev just sort of do that, like in a glass of water. And you are right alongside the SS Greenway. How may I be of assistance? Lev is looking towards uh, Alara. Uh, quite frankly, get yourself equipped up and be ready for anything. Uh, is 
I, I can imagine that uh, Lev has followed uh, Alara. Is is Blister there as well, or? Yeah, Blister will be I, there. Blister will be following. He's now equipped with this massive weapon. <laughs> I can just imagine that while he's equipped, uh, Lev turns to him and... By the way, I'm Leviathan Cross. Hello. Uh, he's got like shuffles the gun around and offers a hand out. Nice to meet you. Uh, welcome to Argo 37. Um, I promise that time isn't always as broken. You seem sad. I'm sorry. Thank you. That's appreciated. All right. Where are we going? Back to the beginning. That's a lot more concise than the description I was about to give. Time is probably of the essence. Or it's not at this point. You know, it could be either way. So. You guys get up. You get ready to go. You look out onto the SS Greenway. And you can see as Argo lines up the two doors and puts across a passage. All aboard. Shall we? Hi, let's go. So, you will walk down this tube, effectively, that Argo has put onto the SS Greenway. Windows either side, and you can look at the SS Greenway, and you see it is falling to bits. The door is unlocked. Do you walk straight in? I'm thinking yes, with that call from Tele Telemachus, Alara's definitely running in there. I'm not running, but she's gonna move forward on it. You open this door, and now Blister, you recognize almost this massive hallway. I do. I've been here before. It's like a huge, huge hallway, all running all the way down to two massive blast doors. I believe if we want to go see Greenway, we need to head to the bridge. It was down this way. You take the lead, huh? If you've been here before, you know the directions better than I would. Oh shit, you were in cryo, weren't you? Yep. Alright, come on, this way. You walk down this hallway and your footsteps echo. Bits of the ship have fallen off and falling apart. You can hear it creak around you. You head up towards the big glass doors. On the floor you can see... Just underneath the door it's stained black. Is that what I think that is? Aye. Probably is. When we left this place last, okay. Alara, I'm probably just going to do a quick history lesson because I definitely would have told you this about Telemachus in the past. Um, when we last were here, we found uh, Greenway, her grandfather. We tried to save him. We got him onto the other ship. Uh, he was infected with this black ichor when we got him on the ship. Um, Telemachus saw us, put him in the airlock, and jettisoned him into space uh, where he was consumed by the ichor. And then I believe we shot it, didn't we? You did. What timeline are you on? No, I don't know if we're in that. I don't know if we're before or after that happened. Or even with this whole quantum thing, we could be on a different timeline altogether. We could. There might not even be a Telemachus here. I don't know. But I know the layout of the ship, and this is the way to the bridge. Well, we know our Telemachus is on here, regardless of who else. She's probably on the bridge. Then let's go to her. The door won't open. The the uh, the system seems to be broken. I'm going to kick in the door. 
could you roll an athletics for me, please? Okay. On a 14, you kick the door over and over, and both Lev and Blister, you see as Alara continually to kick this door, it doesn't open, but denting it as it bends inwards. Is there any sort of uh, like keypad or anything uh, yeah, near the door? Yeah, you can see like a smoking keypad where it was. It looks completely fried. But the wires are hanging off of it, so you can see the wires still there. It's just not necessarily um, functioning. Would you like me to try and get this working? Yes, as quickly as possible. Certainly. And Lev would go and attempt to <laughs> rewire um, things. Yeah, can you roll for me, please? Roll and let's have a look. Intellect is that thing, or am I still inside the system? Yeah. Intelligence check. Okay. It's, uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, you um, you can start rewiring this. You start like trying the different um, wires together, and every now and then you get that spark, which probably makes you recoil a little bit. It doesn't hurt. It's more of a shock. Um, but after a few wires, you stick them and wind them together and the door slowly creaks open just that little way where it's been dented by Lara's foot. Well, that is something. That definitely is something. Thank you. Through this gap, you can see a corridor of blackness. It's not dark. This is the ichor spreading across the floor, along the walls, upon the ceiling. Almost spider web, thick esque, oily spider web sort of hang in the corners. On your right, Blister, you'll remember there was sleeping quarters. And on the left, there was a kitchen. As we go as well, um, Blister's gonna sort of like do a weird sort of bar the security thing where he's gonna start singing one of his little hymns and start mm. seeking flaming all the things that he can see so he's gonna be like oh holy night <laughs> the stars are shining brightly are you just fire up yeah the sacred flame will erupt around these webs yeah some of them start to retract you notice these things are moving themselves, they are crawling. And you hear this high-pitched screech as this flame starts to engulf, especially the sort of spider-esque webs. There is another door at the end of the corridor. Is it close? Yeah, it's pretty close. You have to walk through the black ichor to get there. This much, which is now on fire for most of it. <laughs> it's like an oil. It's not. It's not going up, but the flames okay. are sitting on top of it. Okay. So we could cross over to the other door then. Yes. That's what she'll do. Uh, level follow. <clears throat> this one just opens. Opens as you get close to it. And it opens up onto the bridge. As you step onto this bridge, you can see once again the whole room is covered. Everything is dripping in this black ichor. You can see where it's burnt through some of the floors. There is a chair, the captain's chair. 
at the center. It has its back to you. There's someone sat in there. We can see them over the chair? You can see an arm laying off to the side. It's long. It's gangly. The fingers and the limbs themselves look stretched and black. And as the door, as you get, here's the door open, you see the fingers just curl up. I'm going to. I'm, I'm gonna know that's not Telemachus, so I'm gonna ready my weapon. As this happens, the chair spins round. In front of you is James Greenway. Though he's only just recognizable by his blue eyes that stare stare at you through this this darkness. He's got black burns that cover his face, arms, legs. He doesn't seem to have any hair left at all. All of his limbs a stretched fingers, arms, legs, and he is hunched over. It's like his shoulders have grown. He looks too small for the body he is currently in. And with this sort of long neck, he cranes to look up at you. You. Why are you here? You, you took my daughter, and you took my baby, and I had to travel alone, and look what happened, he just like holds his hands out, and his voice is almost hissing at this point. to blame for creating a monster, it's you. And he's I didn't do this to myself. I think it was always here. Isn't that right, darling? And he sort of looks over and you can see a glass door into where the cryo chambers were. Well, I still know the cryo chambers were. And you can see Telemachus, like, you can't hear her, but she's banging against it and she looks angry. She is shouting, she is pointing, she is trying to kick this door violently. Thank you for bringing her back to me. Oh, she's not being brought back to you because that one's not yours. Blister's lips are going to start moving, but no one except for Greenway will be able to hear. It's all your fault. You're alone because it's your own fault. You made a monster. You killed them all. This one isn't yours. You can't have it. As he casts Dissonant Whisper. He doesn't shake it off, this affects him. And you see him wince and sort of try and shake his head. This one's better than nothing. This one's better than anything else. That's why I took her. Isn't that right, darling? It's okay. We'll do some good, we'll perhaps spend some time together after this. And you can see her just kicking at this door. He still takes half damage on that, by the way. Oh, yeah. Well, we have a slight problem, Daddy. You didn't give me a childhood. There's no way in hell I'm giving you my child. I'm going to shoot at him. Can you all roll initiative for me, please? 
Eh. Ha! Ah, crap. Eh. Oh, Mr. is mad. Damn. Oh, I got a nut one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get this down. So, so okay, Blister, you see this as Alara points her gun at him and says, "It's your go." I that I do. Are we twenty feet from him? You are very close to him. Okay. Are we ten feet from him? Uh, I'd say you're about seven. You like it's literally your. He sat in front in a chair in front of you. Plus, doesn't know how this gun works. <laughs> oh. oh. You just hear. You hear like the. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Uh, sorry everyone, Dave! Uh, as he pulls the trigger, but it doesn't work. He sort of like looks at it and there's like this... Mechanism, because he doesn't make an attack roll with this weapon like the other one. This one, he just chooses a point. So he like looks at it for a second and goes, oh, uh... Him, and focuses it on him. As everyone within a 20 foot radius will need to make a DC 17 dexterity saving throw. I might kill the entire party here, Alice. You're gonna to need to do something amazing. Yeah. That's gonna be interesting. Oh crap. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Blister, what have you done? This is like going out without the spacesuit again. <laughs> yeah, but he was. But the out. gun still has four charges. <laughs> no, that was for the gun, not my deck save. They got a nat twenty. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to roll for Telemachus as well. So close. Ah. Describe this for me. Uh, well, um, the official says that I choose a point in space. Um, the, it's the it creates a black hole, much like the old singularity emitters, except this hole explodes. Um, the 10d10 force damage, or half as much on a successful save, sends everyone flying. Hmm. And we each take 71 damage. I, I only have 19. Yeah, I'm gone. Al Alice, Alice, save Hi, us. Do, do something amazing. This is Argo37. <laughs> do something, Alice, save us Sadly, all. Sadly, Blister fucked up. <laughs> Damn, dude. I, I I don't know how the gun works. <laughs> you fire this. There is an explosion. Bear with me a second whilst I try to think how you guys actually survive this. Scramble that genius brain of yours. Chat's writing, by the way. <laughs> This huge explosion starts to erupt and ball up together. You can see this energy that the blister fires out. And John Greenway stands up and he gets taller and taller and taller. And it's like he comes and wraps himself around this explosion. It's almost like an implosion here. As this Ica absorbs a lot of this explosion. You can see it doesn't slow it down. To the far right of you, a 23-year-old Telemachus appears in a uniform, bracelet on her arm. She runs over and grabs John Greenway and presses the button and disappears with him.
this room is hot. Things start to catch fire. We're still standing? <laughs> You're still standing. You feel burning hot. You're well, not burning, but you feel. Uh, run over and get to one of the side of the chambers. Yeah, she's banging on the, the door like, like absolutely screaming. Now, blister. Roll a perception check for me, please. R roll a what check? Perception, please. I imagine no. I've like gone flying no. backwards. No. When I fired the gun, it like propelled me back into the wall and I've like hit my head or something. Like it sort of dropped a little. In particular blister as the gun itself fired back into your chest. There's only one thing you noticed from this. The older Telemachus was wearing the same uniform she was wearing the day she graduated. I'm gonna do something real important right now. I'm gonna pull pull out the picture that Telemachus gave me with the three of us. I didn't show Alara. Probably best not to. I just wanna take a close look at my own face. What are you trying to find here? The black scarring that's on my face right now. As you look at this, you can see the scar gradually start to appear up your face, you watch Telemachus start to frown, and Alara's not there. Shit, it's like Back to the Future. Uh, Telemachus hell. is going, like, really screaming and banging on this, this door, like, kicking it. Like, you can hear a screaming muffle, yeah. like, what do you do? Right over the <laughs> Can I get her out? Yeah, you can get her okay. out. Like, there's, you can see <laughs> over there, there's like a lock, and she's like, thank you. Bastard. Like, she's like, I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't say that. I mean, he told me not to say it, but not that one of him. Like, it's you can say whatever you want about him, and I'm just gonna like scoop her up and like hug her really tight. Yeah, and she'll hug you like really close back. He's like, Mister, what just happened? Blister's just staring at the picture. Blister, what is it? Um, Alice, I need to roll something. Insight, investigation, anything. I need to roll know. An insight for me, please. Because I've got no idea what's causing this. <laughs> Me either. On a 13, as you stare at the picture, and you remember the Telemachus that effectively popped back into your existence uh -huh. and saved you, is from the day of the photo. To save you, she had to take the thing to Earth. No, I don't understand. Then, take what thing to Earth? John Greenway. She grabbed John Greenway and disappeared with him. She would probably went back to the only time she could remember quick enough that was still scheduled on her bracelet, and flashes of that futuristic dark world that you saw, that she showed you. Oh, I fucked it again. He's gonna put down that fucking gun and never touch it again. What happened? Look! You! Telemachus! Older Telemachus! What did you do? There is no older Telemachus. What? I thought you said the older Telemachus was here. Yeah, disappeared with the James Gre with John Greenway. Oh shit. Took it back. Fuck. Mister, what's wrong? Uh, 
Nothing you need to know about. I can help. No, you can't. Mind your business. Uh. Okay. Uh. Have you still got that time device on you? Yeah. Good, here. And she holds it out. You weren't infected, were you? No, I'm not infected, not at all. I slapped the device on my own wrist. I grab hold of, um... I grab hold of Levi Lev. I'm like, Lev, I might need your help. And I'm gonna go to the time at the graduation. You're leaving alone. You just <laughs> hear, like, the, the connected, like, yes, sir. And <laughs> <laughs> right. Alara. Yeah. Left on the ship. I think it. At this point, I'm running out of there with her. It's. To you hell sprint, with it, mode. Yeah, you yeah. can sprint out of there. Yeah. This Icar sort of, it, it's not fast, but you can see it sort of make its way down the hallway towards you. And you can get back onto Argo. Is it everything go? Oh god, where's he gone now? Don't know, but disengage with the ship and get us away from it. Okay. You know, not like that, anything else to do. You just sort of hear a mumble when you hear like the breakaway as the SS Greenway drifts away from you, and you see this blackness slowly reach out of the windows and consume the ship. I think while watching this, I'm probably just gonna be like holding Telemachus and trying to make it so she's not even seeing that happening. Yeah, she's probably buried her head in your shoulder. Blister and I... Lev. You appear on Earth, you appear outside something that looks like a university, something like that. People are screaming. People are running. What is our objective here? Lev, I need you to find the Alara in this timeline and, and keep her safe. I'm going to go and kill the thing that we just found on the bridge. And he's going to pull back his jacket to reveal the gamma pendant. And touching it for a moment, he's going to begin to fly. Okay. So, Lev, can you make a perception check for me, please? Sure. On a 13, you can, um, as Blister slowly rises up, from the ground you look over and you can hear screaming and shouting amongst these crowds people are going absolutely insane and you can see on the floor over by the steps of the university telemachus an older telemachus the one you saw on the bridge come crashing through and tackling this thing this creature john greenway to the ground you can see blister pulling her off of it and Alara getting ready. What do you do? Lev is going to follow instructions and begin kind of running, um, moving very quickly uh, towards uh, Alara. Can you make me um, an athletics, please, to just see how much you weave through this crowd? Yeah, on another, <laughs> on a 13, you are crashing and bumping through people. Some of them are looking at you absolutely, like, confused as to not just what's just come through, but at you. You notice these people are all humans. I can imagine that as Lev is kind of crashing in, you see Lev kind of change into the person that they had just crashed into just again and again and again and again mm. as uh, they're trying to get to uh, Alara. Yeah, you, uh, you, can, you can run through this crowd and you can see Alara just in front of you as Blister pulls the other Telemachus away from this creature that bounds off across the grounds of the university. You see the Alara. Alara, or V. You see this, 
amoeboid start effectively glooping, is that a word? Glooping its way towards you. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling there's gonna be like a, almost a look of recognition and realization. Yes, you will recognize. You've come back for it, haven't you? I've been told to keep you safe. That is my objective. Keep me safe and help me fight it. I'm not sure getting close to it constitutes keeping you safe. There's no way in hell I'm not taking care of that thing. I'm sorry, Lara. I can't let you go near it. I outrank him, you know. I know, and it pains me to go against, but... I've she's gonna bolt. My... The second she hears bolt, she's running. <laughs> Um, I think that Liv would try and stop her. Okay, roll an athlet- uh, Lara, roll an athletics, and Lev, roll a sleight of hand to grab her before she goes, just opposing rules. Yeah. <sighs> you go to run, but Lev's arm stretches and wraps around <laughs> you and pulls you back. Meanwhile, I'm flying towards this thing. How many people are around it? People are fleeing away from it. Good. They're not going near it. It doesn't seem to be chasing anyone. It seems to be heading away from the university. And where's old uh, Telemachus? She's being dragged off by an alternate you. Not a long scar down there. Not that one. The one that bought the thing here. Yeah, that one. Okay, she's being dragged off. So the thing's on its own. The thing is on its own currently. I'm gonna grab that pendant as I fly towards it and say, I'm gonna need your help here. And I'm gonna start channeling. You can hear that voice, which makes it sound like it's warming up. (laughs) Like, what are we doing? Finally, out of this stuffy leather jacket. Alright, first of all, like, you can just make things appear, right? Yeah, I'm a bit rusty, but let's do it. Okay, cool. I want a mace to appear behind it and try and hit it. seen this film and you can just see this like yes I'm gonna do a tribute to it a green mace appear just behind this and I'll get you to roll damage and everything for me. Uh, It's actually a spell I rolled a three. Rolled a three. It swings and it misses. That's all right because that's a bonus action. Um, Next I want you to use your most powerful spell and try and hit the hell out of it. And essentially, I'm going to try and create a large orbital satellite above the thing, which is going to cast a ninth level conjuration spell called Orbital Hard Light Cannon, um, which will focus an aurora of an immense hard light construct positioned one mile above your head. The cannon fires a blinding beam of energy which lands in a 15 foot radius, one mile high, one cylinder, uh, centered on a point within range. Uh, when a creature starts its turn there, it is scorched by the beam's energy and must make a dexterity saving throw. It takes 20 d10 radiant damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. A 20 d10? A 20 d10, yes. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> it's going to roll. What was the um, save, sorry? Uh, dexterity save. Of? That's a very good question. I really hope it's not blisters. <laughs> oh, using your spell save DC. It's a nine. Okay. I'm going to roll. Can I use my one against you right now? <laughs> yes. Yes. My my one's gonna be used on this so that his spell freaking. Does it. Now you'll see the power of a fully operational amulet. <laughs> Could you roll the damage, please? A 
117 damage. Describe this whole scene for me as you obliterate John Greenway, or what is left of John Greenway. I think everything, like, it starts off as like a green little beam that just touches him, and as the beam gets brighter, it just like gets brighter and brighter and brighter until like all of our vision is whited out. Um, there'll be a roar of noise whistling in the ears and then when it's gone we don't even hear the explosion we just see the crater afterwards. And even Blister's standing there like holy fuck when I said the most powerful thing. People scream and yell, and then there's silence as, like, a wave of air rushes across the university. And it's like, everyone is knocked over. Lev, Alara, you feel this, this like, absolute wave of energy hit you, and it throws you. It throws you off your feet, and about four feet back. And everything lies still. Roll the d20 anyway, Alice. I need to know. Could have beaten you by one. I'm gonna sit up and look around. What do I notice around me? Like, do I see the blister I was taking a photo with, with our graduating the one, the one who was taking the photo with you, probably on your command, dragged Telemachus away from this. You can't quite see him yet, but you do see this other blister slowly lower to the ground from being up in the sky. You can see this black ichor, effectively like a splatter across the grounds in this crater. People are checking that everyone is okay. So he's falling right now? He's not falling. Oh, okay. He is gradually working his way down. I'm gonna stand up. <laughs> and I'm gonna look over to Lev. He didn't happen to tell you any of his plans, did he? No, there was only one objective given to me. Can I like start walking to it looks like where he's going to land? Yeah, yeah. Are you landing officially, Blister, or are you just gonna stay up in the air? And Lev, are you following Alara? Yes, very closely. Uh, I'm going to land. Did you get him? I got him. Entirely? That didn't do it, I don't know what did. I honestly don't even know what to say right now. I can't stay here, I'll make your blister disappear. Go back to her. You need to go back to them both. If you stay here, it's it's not gonna 
fix a thing, but go back to them. I need to take. I went back to. I need to take Lev with me. I can't leave Lev here. Of course, take Lev. I took to and I went right back to the ship. I went through with my objective. You. She is safe. You are the true hero today. I'm gonna look at the picture. You look at the picture. It's a bit crumpled, it's a bit burnt. <laughs> it's a bit fried, and you can see where the colour bleeds off to the side, and you see you with a scar down your face. You see Alara the other side. You see Telemachus stood smiling in between. Aye, that'll do. You did. Mister, you're in a sharp suit. A very sharp suit. For Telemachus's graduation day. What? Can you make a perception check for me, please? Oh, yeah, I will. Whilst still telling Lev that you are the hero of the fucking day and <laughs> rejuvenating about the fact that we've done. That we... Fuck it, I'm using my nat 20. What are you trying. What What am I supposed to see, Alice? <laughs> Looking at the style of your clothes in the picture on you and Alara, you are in the 60s. Where you stand now is 1964. You see a newspaper blow by. This is where you made your new life in the future. It was safe. Go back to them. Take the baby. Take the 13 year old version. Find a safe place for them. And then get the hell out of that timeline. All right. I can't, this is like every safe film we've ever watched together. All right, I'm gonna go and grab Lev, and um, say, "All right, Lev, come on, you're coming with me." And um, tap the device on my arm again to travel back in. Sp I can't keep track of all the things <laughs> I can do right now. I'm gonna try and travel back to the like, future. Like forward to the side. <laughs> yeah. You know, on a couple of hurdles, but yeah. Alara, you stand there looking out the window, holding Telemachus as the great SS Greenway drifts off and is consumed by this black kicker. And beside you, in almost like a sort of flash, Lister and Lev are next to you. Lister's smoking a little bit, like, it just looks like he's steaming. <laughs> You don't need to know. All you need to know is that Lev is a fucking hero. And that you should always trust Lev. Lev, what happened? I went against rank. For that I apologized. And I felt your anger. Which is what I've never felt before. I will be sure to take notes. But you are safe. And that was my objective. How do you mean safe? I'm gonna take us to a safe space. You got answers? N no, but I've got an answer. And that'll do. I'm still holding Telemachus, right? Yeah. She's got a little bobble hat, like her little hat on her head. So what's next? I'm 
flying blind here, Blister. You have to tell me something. Look, look, we can we can be safe, the three of us. Probably means you're gonna be stuck with me though. I'm gonna set Telemachus down. And I'm gonna turn Blister to face me. There is no stuck with you. There hasn't been for a while. I don't know where you went exactly, but for that brief period of time when you disappeared again, I truly thought it was just me and her and that was it. And I didn't want that. So if you have an answer, tell me what it is and I'll give you mine. I have to warn you. If you say yes, we're not gonna have access to Netflix anymore. The selection's been horrible lately, why would I care? I'd like to point out all the Wizmos are start starting to crowd around Lev and, and Telemachus. I, the answer I found is that we can have at least until she's 23 and graduates safe if we go back to a time before space travel was invented and carve out a little life there so no more time traveling no more Bumping into each other's selves. We actually get to be a family. I'm gonna take out the picture and pass it to her. Looks that way to oh. me. And I'll have you know that that changes to reflect what the hell happens as well, by the way. So when you. Before I disappeared, you disappeared from the picture. I think if we go right now in this moment before anything else goes to shit. She's just gonna nod her head. I trust you. I want that happiness. I want to make memories. I don't want to be left without any. We can take Lev, right? Lev, can you pretend to be like some sort of robot or something? They were mad for that shit back then. Or maybe Lev can take care of the other two. If he's as much of a hero as you says he is. The other two? <laughs> Mini me and the other tele Telemachus? Oh, fuck. Maybe? we put that much responsibility on one person? Well, there's also a chamber full of people who have fallen in love with the little girl. Something tells me that they need to step up and help us. God, you're right. Think about it. All those people who've jumped in without questioning. They could help the two of them. And I wouldn't question their safety or their happiness. How does that sound to you, Lev? As long as I can continue my research, that sounds fine. Lev, you'll get the full research of a cobbled together family. Family? That was one of my questions. You're gonna get Thank many. You and are we going somewhere? We're going home. Oh. Well, where's that? <clears throat> I'm gonna take Blister's hand. You said right now? 
I but look Telemachus when you get real famous in this in this where we going okay you're not allowed to call anything Stark Industries what's Stark Industries just remember you're not allowed to call anything that okay. copyrighted And she runs off to the kitchen and brings back a huge plate of protein bars. Um, everyone who wakes up needs to have one of these. You need to scan them and check for their vitals, but on every single... You cannot let them say no to a protein bar. Otherwise, if that Ica comes back, they get poisoned by it. I've been feeding these guys it for ages just so that they won't get infected. You telling me these protein bars are a cure? Well, yeah, I wasn't gonna just wake people up and expose them to loads of diseases and stuff. They've been asleep for ages. He touches his face where the Ishka touched him. That's why you're not, you know. Yeah. Now, as she sort of like does the sort of slight impression, <laughs> room where it's like, no, I mean, I'm sorry, I couldn't do much about that, but. Talamacus, did you never think to eat one yourself? I have one for breakfast every morning. I lick the bowl. What do you expect me to do? Alice, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Lev. That is a sign of respect. Aye. Consider yourself captain of this ship. Oh, my. That would be exciting. Very. I think I would like that very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna press the button as we go back to 1965. No, wait, that was 1965. I go back to 1952. Something like that, yeah. And Lev, you are left as they disappear from the ship, and you are left on the bridge looking out at this darkness this space as you li slowly leave the voidfish field there is a small baby telemachus on the bridge and a young girl wakes up just like rubbing her eyes little girl with dark hair half orc she smiles at you and jumps down where you hold this tray of protein bars she's oh for me thanks and just takes a bite. What do you do? Do you wake people up? I think that um, Lev would reach down and take the girl's hand. You're really cold Come. and clammy. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, I didn't say it's a bad thing. <laughs> Come now. Let us take you somewhere. I believe they said it was safe. Okay. Would you like to help me give these to people? I'd love to. All right. Let's go. And Lev, with the tray, would kind of walk with... Uh, Alara, the young Alara, and uh, head towards the, the cryo pods. And now, we pan over to Blister and Alara. You have made a home for yourself. You are. What sort of home have you made? Is it just a simple, cozy home? Or... God, I wish. 
I have a feeling it'd be a blend of trying to fit in where we are time-wise, but also kind of steering directly into like that whole modern spacey look that was kind of picking up as well to make it feel more like home for us. And you know that we've got some sort of underground lair where Telemachus can express all of her oh, weird we creations because... Totally turned our bomb shelter into her research lab. Absolutely. It's essentially the bat cave. Mm-hmm. Or like the owl cave from Watchmen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And as years oh. go by... Sorry, yes. Before years go by, the first thing I'm going to do when we get there is rip that pendant off me. I'm <laughs> going to put it on the time travel device. And I'm going to set the time travel device for as far into the future as I possibly can. I'm going to max out all the numbers mm-hmm. and then press send. You, when you spin all the dials, you press the button, it disappears. And as we pan forwards, you sit after graduation day in your home. Telemachus has gone off to do her new job. She said she'll be back soon. And you've got that picture up on the fireplace. And your home is pretty modified. Telemachus is effectively your daughter. And a screen comes down. Um, I just want to say, Edra, I didn't volunteer for this. I haven't done much else, but you're getting a call come through. Has Argo been here the whole time? Yeah, but he's like an in-house security. He's useless at it. Like, you've been almost burgled twice, but he is there. <laughs> Telemachus couldn't leave him behind. He is more efficient because Telemachus built him, but at the end of the day, it's Argo. Okay. He plays a video. And it's Telemachus. She's like, hi, I'm at work. Um, so I can actually tell you what I do now because, you know, secret project and everything. Look! And she sort of lifts up her uniform to show you, show you a NASA uniform. And she's like, um... I'm going to be gone a while, but I'll be back. I promise I'll be back. Um, this is my friend. This is my, this is my captain. Like she sort of like winks at Lauren, pulls her over. And she's like, um, this is Lucy White. She's my commander. We are going to travel for a bit and then we'll be back. And she, um, shows, and they gave us all one of these. And she holds out a necklace with a silver tree. I'll let you know when Project Eason finishes. I'll see you later. She switches off. It powers down. And that is the end of Argo Day 37. Sorry it's early, but Blister blew up the bad guy in one move. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh boy. For those who haven't seen Eden. You just tied the two of them together <laughs> in a nice little package. Everything is there. If you both rewatch both campaigns, you will see it all the way through, just as a heads up. Project fucking E. Yep. I told you, everything links. <laughs> Project E, Project Eden. Oh my god. The diseases. Want to solve all diseases. Where do you think things came from? (laughs) Someone in chat just said, I bet there were Easter eggs everywhere and we just didn't catch it. Uh huh. That's exactly Alice's style. <laughs> Is everyone okay? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting a happy ending. Yeah, uh, nor the connection. That's just kind of like, what? Okay. It's like I bowed out. That's that's incredible. Oh my god, that's absolutely amazing.
<laughs> and for the reference to people saying the other Telemachus was evil, she was not. She was born with the stream because John Greenway had the disease already in him. She eats protein bars regularly to keep it dormant. Which she has been making since the beginning. Everyone has received a protein bar every single time they wake up. <laughs> it's everyone okay? No, it's totally fine. It. It's just like <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> it makes you feel better. I'm like <laughs> trying to like make sure it pulls off, but still makes sense. I, seriously, I'm, so, real. I'm like amazing. Uh, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm very sad. It's over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not sad yet, I'm still reeling. <laughs> and my god, you mad scientists at Mage Hand Press, that... That amulet is overpowered. <laughs> Holy moly. Mother of god. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I got one, like, you know, round of applause because Jerry said that was just incredible. Well, Megan, I'm so sorry you were thrown into the absolute <laughs> chaos that is Argo 37, which I'd like to say every viewer that comes in, well done. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Space stuff and time uh, stuff can be very uh, all over the place, but you had such a grasp on it, which was super, super fun to see. So oh, awesome. my brain has got to go to sleep for like two months now. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to recuperate. <laughs> you. Oh lord. This is just oh wow. Seriously, I'm like brain I'm like filing everything right now in my brain. But yes, as I said, if you do watch both campaigns again, you'll probably see all the way through. It's, it's annoying because it's going to be one of those things that you rewatch it and go, oh God, yes. Uh -huh. And I couldn't show, I couldn't make the link in Eden too obvious because the only way to do it in Eden was to tell you. No one checked the, the staff rotor on the ship. So it was okay. There was going to be a Telemachus in there, wasn't there? There was only one person left on Eden, and that White. was Lucy White. Telemachus wasn't on there. But if they'd have searched names, they would have seen the name Telemachus in a cryo chamber. I can't wait to see what you do for next season. Seriously. <laughs> you have. Well, my brain needs a rest first. Yeah, I guess yeah. then, then it's got to delve into the three new campaigns I have to. Wake up, so. Alice. As I'm still reeling, would you mind leading the the wrap ups? Yeah, I think just to let all of you breathe a second, I'll do a bit of a wrap up as well. Um, I'm Alice. Oh, camera falling. I'm White Rabbit Pick is where you can find me on Twitter when I'm not doing this. I am a photographer, lifestyle weddings. All of it there you go i just want to say that this first season has been epic i love it so much um i put a lot of work into these campaigns and to have such awesome people come in and play them through and do them like make them even better it's been so i don't know honoring is that the word i can't really think but it's been so good and chat you have been so awesome as well I love how many riots I got in this chat. <laughs> um, yeah, it's 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 been really really good. I can't say too much because I I don't know what to say. So there'll probably be a very long tweet later, like a thread over it all. But right now, I know I'm the DM. I know I knew what was going to happen, but I too am still like a little bit shaky over it because there's always the pressure I find of delivering it well so yeah but other than that we're gonna go around talk about where we can find you what your favorite bit was whether it's of this episode the season or whatever and plug yourself put um we'll do links uh, yeah 
words are disappearing now. Now my brain's fi finally can relax a little bit. Go there. So we're going to start with Dice on Ice RPG. Hi, Megan. How are you? Hi. Uh, so I'm Megan. I am one half of the YouTube channel Dice on Ice. And I just wanted to, to say thank you so much for uh, inviting me to come play. This was super awesome. I was so enraptured with the story right right away. It was just so, so cool. So thank you so much uh, for letting me uh, be a part of this. Did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you for coming and being a part of this. Yeah, I was going to say, thank you for being a part of this. So, Scrap, do you want to take over or do you want to still... No, you carry on. Breathe. <laughs> no, you carry on. And V, wonderful V, how are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm okay. I'm good. I get to paint a snowman soon. That should help. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm supposed to be the distracted artist when I'm teaching a bunch of kids how to paint. It's no yeah. big deal. <laughs> But um, yeah, I'm I'm V. I am the Crafting Muse. I have a YouTube channel where you can see how to craft different things for your game terrain, uh, including minis and game accessories and terrain itself. Uh, you can find me here on Stratagus Academy. I will be playing a couple games next season, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you can actually catch me later this evening with Megan. Uh, we're going to be playing our Sunless Citadel, and it's actually that season finale, not the series finale, provided we don't all die. Um, and it's actually a really fun game. So if you want to join us over there, we're on mini terrain domain starting at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, where I will be playing Cantriel the Bard and Megan plays by our beloved Druid. Uh, so you can find us there. And I think that's about all my brain is recalling at the moment. So Alice, this was amazing. Thank you so much. No, thank you. Seriously, thank you. Um, Scrap, hello, wonderful husband. How are you feeling? <laughs> I mean, I know you were tired anyway, gonna... so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I think because Blister would have been as well, so it made it quite realistic as he made bad decisions, which turned out okay. Um, Blister flew. Blister, Blister did fly. fly. Yeah, I mean, as much as that amulet was very overpowered, if there was ever a time to become the Green Lantern, that was probably it. <laughs> um... Okay. I'm Scraticus. This has been amazing. I don't cross my wife, ever. <laughs> she's an evil genius um yeah you can find me here all the time um what, what I, I'll, I'll leave the wrap up wrap up um you think well yeah Alice you've already done your bit so yeah um social links everyone if you're here if you're enjoying the game um check out the discord the twitter and the youtube um discord for community twitter to send me a dm and I'll get you a game and youtube to go back and catch up with everything and see where all of these crafty hidden easter eggs have been hidden um there's a patreon it's one of the best ways to support us um if you go and support us on patreon you can also click the second link to make a notification appear in stream um there's also free articles and things over there there's going to be another one soon about packs uh, from renee so um yeah there's that um also we have merchandise go and check that out um i don't know if we'll have any argo 37 merch but maybe in the future um if anyone wants to do a fan art of like that family portrait at the end or something that'd be awesome um what just a whizmo on a disco ball or a whizmo on a disco ball yeah <laughs> um what else have we got we may chan press we need to give a big uh a big hand may chan press who really made all this possible um, their 5e expansion is what we're playing today, the space expansion, um, called Dark Matter. It's available on those websites there. You can go and buy it now, um, or get access to the alpha at least now. Um, yeah, incredible. Incredible. So much fun. Uh, and also we have Bird in the Storm as well, who are going to be bringing content to us in, uh, the new season. Um... Quarter two, actually, not new season. Quarter two, they'll be bringing some stuff to us. We'll be working on it in the new season. Um, this has been a hell of a ride. We'll be back in a couple of hours for... Um, we'll be back in a couple of hours. Well, actually, a couple and a half hours for the finale of Hidden Masters, the Monster Hearts game. 
uh, until then, we're going to go and pay a visit to someone who is doing some art right now. We're going to go and visit uh, Obes Baby 190 who is on our um, Curse of Strahd stream. Um, which is also now on break until January when it will be returning. Um, this will not be returning in the new season. This will not. Um, however, um, there, there will be a new Dark Matter project next season. Uh, with different players, different DM. There will be announcements next week about all of our shows next season. So, um, there's our, our war cry. Um, we're 17... going to go breathe now. <laughs> yeah, we're all going to go breathe. I promise that time isn't always as broken. Keep evoking emotions, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.